I'm Kelly Harrell, author, animist, and creator of the Weekly Rune. Solenton Arts is my soul-tending practice, and you're listening to What in the Weird, my podcast in which I talk about runes, actionable animism, soul-tending, and how all of those intersect through sacred activism on my path. The Weekly Rune is out, and if you're not sure what it is, it's a rune cast that I've done for years, focused on the runic calendar and the current half-month rune. The Weekly Rune is now available in full on Patreon.com. Just do a search for Kelly Harrell to find it, and you can find the archive of all past rune casts on my site, soulintentarts.com. If you're not sure what a half-month is or what the runic calendar is, Listen to the early episodes of What in the Weird, or just go read the weekly rune. It's explained fully at the beginning of every runecast. Thank you to everyone who listens to the podcast, to those who send notes and share their experiences of the runes. That's what it's all about, and I'm grateful for the engagement. I also want to thank my Patreon supporters who make the sharing of my rune work through the podcast and the RuneCast possible with their financial support. If you've benefited from the RuneCast, the podcast, or the ton of free articles on the runes, animism, and soul tending on my website, you can show your support through buying my books, which you can find at soulintentarts.com or Amazon, by making a one-time contribution through PayPal or Square, or by contributing regularly through Patreon. Just go to patreon.com and search for Kelly Harrell. You can also subscribe to the paid version of the Weekly Rune there, and thank you for it. I've had a call out that we need to talk about. Several listeners have contacted me about how many times on the podcast I say, that's a whole other episode. Folks want me to create those episodes, so my challenge to you is... Which whole other episodes do you want me to make? What questions do you have about topics that have come up in previous episodes that really should get their own shiny episode? Email me, message me at Instagram, tell me that whole other episode that you need to hear. I've spent a lot of time in the weekly rune and on what in the weird somewhere around episode 62 I think talking about how we can't be off our path the idea that it's either or off on binary it's colonized dualistic thinking to say nothing of being not at all animistic if everything is life force and all life force is connected, then we're always on our path, right? When we apply that thinking to la goose, the water rune, it means we're always in flow. And when I say flow, I mean internal flow, personal flow, the whole mind, body, soul, feelings, inner cosmology kind of flow, and also simultaneously the bigger non-personal flow that is all things. The big collective, the mothership, the multiverses. Those personal, non-personal components are always in relationship with each other, with all life force ever moving onward. The catch is that we're either aware that they are or we aren't. I realize that saying we're always in flow can sound very love and light, very spiritual bypassy, and suggesting that we're either aware of flow or we aren't can sound victim blamey. Y'all know by now I'm not playing that shit, so what I want to talk about in this episode are the reasons that we lose awareness of flow at personal and collective levels and what we can do to come back to our awareness as much as possible. So what happens that we think we're not on our paths? What happens that we think we're not in flow? The big duh is that ultimately flow is flow, right? 
personal or non-personal, internal, external, above, below, it's all connected. And, and that knowledge is the touchstone of this entire conversation. You don't have to listen to any more of the podcast. That's it. Just kidding. But Kelly, you say, I'm an individual. I'm not a collective. I'm distinct. I make my own choices. I have free will. Well, let's talk about that. One of the core understandings of death walking and why souls get stuck is that they lack the agency they had when they were in bodies, which is to say when we're in physical form, when we have bodies, we have a greater opportunity to have an effect on physical life. So, I mean, we're talking about the natural laws of existing in the earth plane, right? I'm not talking about some other multidimensional space where people make arguments that quantum physics do different things. I'm talking about right here on earth, we are meat suits that engage theoretically solid stuff around us. Things get done. We can move. We can act. We can speak. We can think and create new strategies for doing all of the aforementioned. When we're in form, we have free will. We don't have that as souls, or at least not in a capacity that generates results in the formed world. There are lots of arguments around how souls do affect form B. Whole other episode. <clears throat> but they don't as individual life force, have the free will that they did when they were in bodies. What does having free will in physical form have to do with being aware of flow? In another time, maybe absolutely nothing, but that's where things derail. If we had an unbroken experience of animism, which means an unbroken direct relationship to flow, then we wouldn't be having this conversation. We wouldn't need to have this conversation. If we have an unbroken direct relationship to flow, then we never perceive ourselves as separate from it at all. And on the surface, that's like, oh yeah, okay, yeah, I get that. But, but really think about it. Think about what it would really mean to have an unbroken direct relationship to flow. It would mean never being alone. It would mean always having access to guidance beyond just yourself. And I don't mean the like when I pause to think about talking with my spirit guides or meditate kind of access, like wax on, wax off access. I mean all the time, hardwired into your mind's base functioning, not just this philosophical awareness that you can tap into when you feel like all the time as part of how your mind functions. It would also mean having a truly nonlinear sense of time, meaning no angst about the past, no fear of the future, because those concepts don't exist. It means a healthier, sustainable way of living because you're in sync with nature and season to perfection. It means not carrying your traumas or your wounds to the point of PTSD or soul loss. It means passing on all of that wisdom to your descendants so that they can roll with the elements as they show up in their time to create their own technologies and means of engaging them. And maybe more than any of those or because of all of those. Having an unbroken direct relationship to flow means a continual lived experience of the communal self. It means continuous all for one, so say we all. So imagine all of that stuff, all of the stuff that we have scriptures and codexes written about, plus free will. Can you imagine having all of that awareness of connection to flow while using free will to support it with everything you do? Having a continual awareness of center, ethically, spiritually, communally, that you're acting out of all the time because it is your nature to do so. You don't know any different. It's almost like an ideal balance of power, soul in form, the boundlessness of spirit being combined 
with human free will. That's pretty fucking amazing. And that is what we are. So if we have all the components to do that, why don't we do it? The short answer is because we are a broken path. And broken path doesn't just mean we lost access to our lineage spiritual traditions. It also means that we lost awareness of that boundlessness of spirit being. We lost the concept of flow, let alone of our antenna that lets us tap into it. All of that stuff that's the magic of getting shit done, getting folks taken care of, functioning well with nature, we lost all of that. Just knowing that the broken path is the reason why we lose awareness of our personal and non-personal flow isn't enough to bring us back to it. Knowledge isn't enough. Information is not transformation. We have to do the work that the information brings to the front of our awareness. Because once we make that realization and undertake bringing our awareness back to flow, we start to feel these yucky, unfluffy things that have to be dealt with. And for a lot of folks, when those feelings start is when they decide flow is too damn much work. And that's when the bypassy love and light aspects, you know, I'll just let this crystal take care of it, start to happen. The truth is holding awareness of flow is messy, or at least it is at the beginning. I I tend to think that there are episodic messes, but it does come with the realization that the reason it's hard to do was because it's the result of an intentional systematic wound, a trauma that we all carry. And if we're not careful, are still perpetuating it. It is personal. The the reason we're not in flow is political. There's a reason that some people can't hone that antenna as well as others and stay locked in on awareness. And that's because we don't come into form with just our fly be free selves and our agency. We come in with the unresolved shit of our former experiences of fly be free selves. We come in with intergenerational trauma of our ancestors' unresolved stuff. We come into broken communities, social systems, family structures. We come in with atypical neurology, emotional and physical capabilities. And nothing about the culture that we live in tries to even that playing field. Yes, We all have an antenna, but how to use it, being taught that there is one at all, not all of us get that information. And even when we do, we don't just automatically have the skills or resources to get the skills to make use of it. So when you're struggling with your spiritual practices, when you're judging yourself because you're falling out of flow or you see somebody else who's struggling with their practices, remember that shame is part of the grooming away from flow. When you're feeling like you just can't pull it together, step back, let it go. Because being dogged about it and hard on yourself isn't flow. Making it a contest, even a contest with yourself in the name of personal goals, isn't flow. What is flow? How do we recognize it? I I think it's different for everybody. And, And so we have to be willing to just jump in and see how we experience it. A good rule of thumb is if something causes tension in your body, it's not flow. Tension isn't flow and the body never lies. It is your most finely honed gauge for being in flow. I want to close with the Lagu's half month affirmation from Runic Book of Days. And I know I said this in the last episode, but these affirmations, even more than the devotions and initiations in Runic Book of Days, are the PowerPoints of this book. Not PowerPoint like slides, PowerPoint like power. The places where you really, truly can sit with this phrasing and feel it in your body. I am this. I am you. 
we are. Thanks for listening. If you have questions or insights about working with the runes in season, or you just want somebody to bounce your ideas off, feel free to email me at kelly, that's K-E-L-L-E-Y, at solentinarts.com, or you can call into the Anchor app, which you can download for Android or iPhone. Also check out earlier episodes by downloading them from Google Play or iTunes and various other podcast platforms. And you can learn more about me, Runic Book of Days, and my work by visiting solentinarts.com or on Instagram at Kelly Soul Arts. I'm Kelly, and this has been What in the Weird.